Samtastic here. I know it's been a while since I've done any sort of updates or videos. Uh, a couple reasons for that. One of them, I had a couple videos on my phone. There was some work I did in my car, and I was going to put those videos up. And um, my my phone just decided that it wanted to have a corrupted micro SD card, so I had to wipe that. I lost all my data, all my pictures. Um, any programs that I had installed to the SD, I don't know if I did. Anyway, um, so that sucked. That was not that was not awesome. And in addition to that, I haven't really been spending that much time um, doing all that much. I've been studying for the CompTIA A, A plus certification, uh, working my way through it there. I am currently on chapter ten, uh, power supplies, and there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. And most of it I already knew. Uh, but there are some holes in my knowledge, so I'm just filling those in, and, uh, and I'm going to get that certification now, even though I should have gotten it five years ago, I think. Um, so in the CPU section, it was talking about overclocking, and it sort of inspired me to, to go back to uh, overclocking the CPU in my desktop, which I'm going to be doing. And that CPU is the Intel E3300 um, Celeron Dual Core. Uh, 2.5 gigahertz CPU and the issue that I had overclocking it previously was uh, basically heat uh, it would get it would get really hot and the system would shut down from the heat and I mean it, not I mean not a whole lot mostly the computer just gave off a lot of heat um, but uh, yeah the problem is that I'm using the OEM fan that came with the CPU which is not designed to handle um, any any sort of heat beyond the the factory standard for that CPU. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more thermal paste on it. I'm and I'm going to just kind of tweak the settings to to get it about right. Um, that particular CPU I've read uh, that some people have successfully overclocked it to about uh, three gigahertz. Uh, I don't know if they were running the like the same games that I am. Um, but I think they had said that it... I don't know, anyway, that's irrelevant. Uh, I'm, I'm probably not going to get it that high. I may start out bumping it up to like 2.66, or um, I'm, I'm going to try to find a happy medium there between performance and heat so that, uh, so that I can get a little bit more performance out of my PC and, um, and not cause it to catch on fire. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so... Here is my case, windowed, oh yeah, and that's not supposed to be snagged on. All right, so this is the CPU down here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, I've got everything all kinds of weird tangled in here. Just kind of get these power cords out of the way a little bit, and as someone had actually mentioned to me previously, they were wondering where my anti-static wrist strap was, and I, uh, I don't have one. I've actually never had one. Um, I, don't, I don't actually use them, which isn't highly recommended, but uh, it's the facts. So I'm going to disconnect the fan here. try to get this, in. oh, my camera was moving. All right, so it's got these four little clips on here, and you can use a flathead screwdriver or just your fingers to rotate them, which can be a little bit difficult in some places. Basically anything over here that I'm touching with the exception of my GPU right there is a heat sink on the RAM, and right here, this is the heat sink on the chipset. I just kind of pop that loose and uh, I don't like these fans the way that they're set up. I just I get really nervous putting them on the board actually more so than taking them off. But I am removing this so that I can put fresh thermal paste on there because as you can see it's a little bit dried up. Um, 
probably from the previous overclocking. So I don't actually have anything that's particularly good for webbing that sort of thing up, any sort of cloth. Um, so I'm going to do something else that you probably shouldn't, and I'm going to use a tissue just to wipe that stuff up that's on there. And you don't have to worry too much about damaging the top of your CPU, you just want to be careful to not apply too much pressure to it. And so I'm just leaving that clamped in here. For those that wonder, this is an Enforce 750i um, XFX, as you can see on their motherboard. So that's kind of cleaned up. And so this, this is an LGA 775 chipset. And what we're going to be talking about here specifically relates to the LGA 775 chipset. So this CPU is an 800 megahertz front side bus rated CPU. This, so this is the thermal paste that I had previously mentioned in um, my fan video. And we're just going to apply some of that on there. And it's supposed to be pretty even theoretically. And I don't want too little, nor do I want too much, because you put too much and it's going to ooze off of the CPU all over the place. So I'm going to try to get just an even layer on there. Now that I got that paste on there, nice and fresh, I'm going to stick this fan carefully back on and you just turn these so that when you push down it will clamp into place and hold that fan on there pretty securely. And get that relatively even pressure. Oh, flexing the motherboard, good stuff. Okay, so I got the fan back on. Um, that design really makes me anxious. I really like to have the motherboard out of the case uh, to do that, um, but I just didn't really consider that an option. So you hook your power back up for the fan, otherwise you're gonna have overheating problems pretty quick. And, uh, and oh great, now that's giving me trouble. All right, there we go. You, you mostly want to be pretty careful doing anything inside your, your PC, just to not shove on anything too hard, um, or you could damage components. And, uh, and that's just never, that's never a good thing. So, I mean, is there a way that that'll not be right against the uh, GPU board? I don't know. Maybe that's why I had this running through it. Probably so. So we'll hook that back up. And on this motherboard, they do, there are a number of different ways that um, manufacturers allow overclocking. It used to be back in the day you'd have to like set the jumpers for the CPU and all that fun stuff. Um, those days are gone. All that stuff is automatic. But right down here, there is, you can see the little the little green thing there. There's a little jumper that uh, when it's set one way, the uh, CMOS will not let you overclock the CPU. If it's set the other way, it will. And I just have that turned on. Another thing to note when you're getting to this point is on the back of the case, right here, there is a clear CMOS switch, um, which I've actually had to use, because if you do settings that cause it um, to not boot at all, then you have to basically um, push that button down and, and it will clear the CMOS. There are some, some computers that use jumpers uh, for the CMOS clear, and um, there are a couple of different ways to do that. This one just has a button because it's designed for system enthusiasts like myself. All right, we're getting this fired up. The um, CMOS here, uh, the key to get to it is delete. So I usually hit it a few times just to be sure. And I noticed that I actually already have this set up for overclocking. This is the cell menu and this is enabled because of that jumper setting. And I've actually got the front side bus running at 966 megahertz already with an increased 0 0.025 volts. Um, and the system has been running pretty stably at those temperatures. So 
Um, granted, the thermal paste had kind of turned to a much harder compound than it should be, but uh, I have been running at this frequency, and it has been running okay, so since I got fresh paste on there, I'm going to go ahead and overclock it a little bit more, and I'm going to check the calculator here, because um, right now it's at a 966 frontside bus, and I was looking at the manual for the motherboard, and it actually supports up to 1200. Uh, so we are going to, that's rating at 966 times 12.5. Um, there we go. It's actually about 3 gigahertz right now, so I'm going to clock it up a little bit higher. Let's see if we go to um, 1066, it's going to be like a 3.3, .3, so we're going to go ahead and give that 1066, and we're going to increase the voltage a little bit because we kind of need to do that. So you use the plus here, and we're going to do point. 0 0.05 volt increase, um, and uh, and we're going to go ahead and save this. Okay, so we're back up and running, and if I seem a little bit irritated, it's um, it's because I'm having a lot of problems with Camtasia not working the way it's supposed to. Uh, so. I'll do this in a nutshell. This is the source of the confusion. Is I've got uh, I had this information, which basi basically gives you the information right from the CPU, and that is the CPU I've got. That's not the way I'm running it. Uh, but you can check out CPU Z show. It's actually running at 3.33 uh, gigahertz, and uh, rate of frontside bus is 1066.6. Bus speed is 266. And the the multiplier is a little bit confusing, but to get the rated frontside bus. Uh, Basically, you multiply the bus speed by four, um, and you uh, multiply the bus speed by 12.5 to get the core speed of the CPU. And different CPUs have different multipliers. It, it is specific to the CPU, um, but that's how you can end up getting these numbers, basically. And that um, that number means that the CPU is capable of performing 3.3 uh, billion operations per second, basically, is what that means. So uh, that's why it gets hot. Um, Another program that I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're doing any sort of overclocking and whatnot uh, is SpeedFan. Uh, if you're having some temperature problems in your computer, this is good to try to figure out if it's like the graphics card or the processor, what, what fan you need to clean off or, or replace. And, um, and here it's got little flames going on, but that's not really alarming. If it gets over like 80 or 90 degrees Celsius, that's something to worry about. You'd want to get a little bit uh, better CP or a heat sink um, and fan set up so that uh, so that you're not going to destroy your hardware. Uh, I'm not sure where it's pulling this temp 3 here because it's at negative uh, 128 Celsius. I get I guess you know I got a little cryo unit in my PC no big deal. Uh, I wish I could hook it up to my CPU to keep that temperature down but uh, but I can't. So in a nutshell that's it. Uh, if you were thinking about overclocking your CPU but you were nervous about doing it I hope this gave you a little bit of confidence and uh, and you can get that uh, get that task done because uh, it's really not that hard um, and oh another thing about CPU-Z you can actually use that program to modify uh, your your overclock settings if you set up your motherboard to do so I did not do that I didn't tell it to allow software to do that uh, I just did it through the CMOS myself so uh, that is another way that you can do it if if you want to have this interface for it um, but uh, but I hope that helps anyone that was uh, a little confused about the process and uh, and uh, have fun don't break your stuff and uh, Samtastic out